Signal Oil program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. The first year. The story of Lydia Winters falls naturally into two parts, separated by exactly one year almost to the minute. Her marriage to Elliot Larkin ended, of course, on New Year's Eve, somewhere around midnight at a place called Silver Lake Lodge. The circumstances surrounding its ending are a matter of record now in the files of the police department, Homicide Division. The beginning is another story, a personal one. Just a year before, early on New Year's morning, Lydia Winters had stood at the door of her uncle's apartment with Elliot, listening to the whistles ushering in the new year. Darling. Huh? Listen. (laughs) It's official now, a brand new year. Brand new life. Mm. I'd better go in now, Elliot. Look, Lydia, let's go together. You can speak your piece now. Back your office. I've already told you I want to talk to Uncle Philip alone, darling. Oh, but why waste New Year's Eve? Good Lord, woman, it'll only take a minute to I tell you, I love you, boy. dear, and I'm going to marry you. But you <laughs> might as well learn right now, when I make up my mind, I mean it. As uh, so Marty tells me. Poor Marty. Yeah, poor Marty. You looked like you hit him with a pole axe when you told him tonight. He'll get over it. They all do. I wonder if we will. Maybe. But it'll be fun while it lasts. Lydia, why are you marrying me? Oh, you dance well, you're good-looking... You have charm of a sort, and of course... Uh, My money. (laughs) Your money. (laughs) I'm tired of depending on Uncle Philip. Ah, you're a worldly woman. But very practical. Kiss me, darling. Good night, Elliot. I'll pick you up tomorrow at noon. Mm -hmm. We can be married in Greenville and run up to Silver Lake Lodge for a couple of weeks, huh? You're so capable, darling. All figured out for me. Yeah, except Uncle Philip. Just leave Uncle Philip to me, dear. Good night. Good night. Happy New Year. (laughs) Uncle Philip. Oh, it's you. You old darling, waiting up for me? There's a very good reason, Lydia. I want to talk to you, seriously for once. Oh, and I know just what it's about. You don't approve of Elliot, do you, dear? You think he's a fortune hunter, irresponsible, unworthy of me. And I'm so hard and thoughtless and gullible. You through? Yes. Good. Then please understand this. If I have any concern about Elliot Larkin... It's on his account, and not yours. Is that so? Exactly. In the proper hands, he might, just might understand you, grow up into a decent human being. With you, he hasn't a chance. Now, wait a minute. If you think you can tell me... Well, let me finish. That's beside the point anyway. You're just like your mother was, Lydia. The same selfishness, the same abysmal ignorance of the true meaning of marriage. You're not in love with this man. He's not in love with you. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Of course I'm sure. To get to the point, Lydia, I will not approve your marriage to Elliot Larkin or any other man until you indicate some small understanding of what the word means. 
until you're able to look upon it as a sacred contract instead of an adventure. I see. Now, I'd be grateful if you'd step off the soapbox while I tell you something. I don't care what you think. Listen to me, Lydia. I'm through listening to you. I'm of age, Uncle Philip. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm marrying Elliot, whether you approve or not. I don't care about you or your money or anything else. It's my life, and I intend to live it as I please. I'm leaving at noon tomorrow, Uncle Philip, and there's nothing you can do about it. Hmm. Nothing I can do about it, eh? Yeah. Ballinger? Yes? Phil Ridgely. I uh, hate to get you up, old man. Oh, not at all. Two years, you know. We're having a little party. I want to see you right away, Ballinger. About my will. Oh. How about tomorrow morning? I said right away. Now. Good Lord, Phil. You can't do a thing like this now. Why not? Why, it's... It's vicious. If there was any chance for a success of, of Lydia's marriage, it's destroyed by this, this thing. You can't play with people's lives as if they were puppets. It's my money, Ballinger. I can do with it what I please. Now get this again. The new will is to provide that if Lydia and Elliot Larkin live together as man and wife under the same roof for a period of ten years, they are to receive the principal legacy of $500,000 jointly, or half to each other as they may choose. That failing... It goes to the Children's Relief Fund. Got that? That's clear enough. Now, if at any time during those ten years, either one of them die by any means, the entire sum is payable to the survivor immediately. Now, look here, Philip. I realize I'm in no position to question your moral code. But this thing is fiendish. Why, it'll set them at each other's throats. Perhaps it will, Ballinger. Perhaps it will. It's a sort of a test, you know. If I'm right, if the marriage means nothing to either of them, it will destroy them. On the other hand, if I'm wrong, it will be a real reward. Yes, but don't you see? It's not a will, Philip. It's a weapon. Maybe. I know I won't live to see it work out. But you'll see it, Ballinger. You're to acquaint them with the provisions the moment I die. There's a comfortable retainer in there for you to see it's followed to the letter. You know, I envy you, Ballinger. It should prove very interesting. with Elliot Larkin, when suddenly, impetuously, you decided that here was the answer to Uncle Philip's tyranny, an avenue to freedom. And it's worked out fairly well, hasn't it? It's not a storybook marriage, of course, but you didn't expect that. Still, Elliot is fairly presentable, reasonable, and charming, and you're sure he's wealthy enough to keep you well-dressed and entertained. And until something better comes along, you're content. It was an evening in October that changed all that. The two of you had just arrived home from a football game. Old Johnny Gates, can you imagine running into him that way? <laughs> I felt like a lost sheep with the two of you huddled together all that. Well, I haven't seen him since college. Oh, here, let me take your coat. Uh -huh. There. It was a lucky break running into him that way, you know? Where's the cigarette? Oh, a minute. Oh, here you are. Catch. Thanks. What do you mean, lucky break? You didn't pay any attention to the game. Well, he's leaving his job. He's going to the Orient. Oh? Yeah, he represents some cordial outfit, liqueurs, mm. that sort of thing, you know. Well, I mean, that's the job he's leaving. It's a pretty good job. What's that got to do with you? He says he'll recommend me to replace him if I want it. You... You mean you're going to work? Well, why not? I can't be a playboy all my life, you know. <laughs> <What>? Elliot! <laughs> you darling, what the world got into your head? What's so funny, huh? <laughs> Elliot, you working all... Yeah, well, you better answer the phone. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Hello? Mrs. Larkin? Yes? This is uh, Mr. Ballinger, your uncle's lawyer. I'm not at home to my uncle, Mr. Ballinger. You can tell him Just there's... a minute, Mrs. Larkin. 
I'm calling to tell you that your uncle passed away this afternoon. I see. It's my duty as his executor to read to you the terms of his will. Who is it, honey? Uh, just a minute, please. Uncle Philip's dead. Something about the will. Well, let me talk to him. I'll handle it. Mr. Ballinger, perhaps you don't quite understand my relationship with Uncle Philip. Wait a minute. Elliot. Give me that phone now. What do you think you're doing? Time I knock some sense into your head, Angel. You may as well know it now. We're broke. Well, what? Or oh, as close to it as you can get without selling the furniture. That's why I took Johnny up on the job. Hello? You, you had Hello. money. A lot of it just... Never mind not. that now. You just tell Mr. Ballinger we'll be glad to talk to him. You hear? Go on. Take the phone. Uh, hello? Uh, hello, Mr. Ballinger? Yes? We'll be over right away. How'd it taste, dear? What? Humble pie. I'm not in the mood for that sort of thing, Elliot. Why didn't you tell me you were broke? You didn't ask. You just went along with what everyone believed about the lock and You portion. think that was fair to me? Well, it works two ways, Angel. After all, I was under the impression your Uncle Philip's worldly goods were practically in your pocket. I see. Well, I guess I'd better make this clear, Elliot. I don't love you. I never did. Oh, now, take it easy. And bright and early tomorrow morning, I'm leaving his house and I'm not coming back. Really? Well, I'm going to miss you terribly. Where are you going? Does it matter very much? No, not really. Tomorrow's up to you, Lydia. Tonight, on the other hand... I'll see Mr. Ballinger alone. Uh Uh-uh, we're going together, darling. Somehow I'm just a little curious about your uncle's will. You... You mean this thing forces us to love each other? More or less. That is, if you want the money... You will live together under the same roof for ten years. Yes, I heard it the first time, Ballinger. Now, are you sure it'll hold up under probate? It's quite legal, if that's what you mean. Naturally. You didn't know Uncle Philip very well, Elliot. Most efficient man in the world. Well, uh, well, that, that's it. Is there any questions with you? No. No, it's all very clear. Oh, come on, Elliot. Well, then, uh, good night. Good night, Lockin. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Amusement, Elliot, or the beginning of a story? Uh, a little of each, I suppose. You know, you must admit the old boy had a sense of humor. Must I? Ten years, nine to go. Well, I guess there was a time when I'd be willing to do anything for a half million dollars. Right now, I don't know. It won't make any real difference, Elliot. I want that money. You live your life, I'll live mine. No questions, no answers. Except for the watchdog. Ballinger? Yes, we can handle him. I suppose it's worth a try. All right, dear, what's the first move? Your friend, Johnny Gates. Johnny? You'll need that job now. You have a wife and home to support. Remember? At that moment, you're forced to admit something to yourself, aren't you, Lydia? That Uncle Philip was right. That your marriage to Elliot Larkin is a farce. A hollow, mocking thing that was never meant to be. And there's something else, Lydia. The strange will. As the weeks pass, you know it for what it really is. An instrument of torture. A weapon striking back at you from the grave. Yes, Uncle Philip might as well be alive and laughing at you. Telling you that you can't win. But through it all, you're determined that somehow, some way, you'll defeat Philip on his own ground. Then on New Year's Eve, the night marking your first year together, Elliot calls you at the apartment. Yeah? Lydia, I thought you might be interested. I've got that job. Johnny? Yeah, he's giving it up, leaving right away. Oh, nice. Tonight I can drink champagne that's paid for. Oh, oh, about that. I won't be able to make dinner until later. I'm helping Johnny celebrate. Oh, don't worry about that. I meant to tell you we can skip the dinner plan. I'm meeting Marty Bell at the Zebra Club. Marty Bell, huh? Well, true love never dies. Good old Marty. <laughs> don't tell me you object. Darling. I'll see you tomorrow, Elliot. You'll see me tonight if you insist on going there with Belle. I'll come down to the zebra club. And what? Don't play the jealous husband, Elliot. That's really overdoing it. Goodbye. Lydia! Lydia! (laughs) (laughs) Marty. Marty, you're very amusing. But I mean it, Lydia. I love you. Does anyone really mean that? I want you to go away with me, Lydia. Leave Elliot. Please, Marty. Trying to break up the perfectly matched, adoring Larkin. It isn't breaking anything up, and you know it. You're not fooling me, Lydia. Stop it, Marty. You don't care a hang for Elliot. I does... said stop it. Hello. There's someone coming over to our table, an old friend. Really? I don't see anyone Mr. who... Mr. 
Ballinger. What an unexpected surprise. Yes, I guess. I'd it. like you to meet Marty Bell, an old friend of Elliot. Oh. <laughs> Marty, Mr. Ballinger. Oh, how do you do, Marty? keeping me company while I wait for Elliot, but he has an appointment. Maybe you sit in for a while, Mr. Ballinger, isn't it? Glad to, but... Then uh, Marty won't have to waste any more time. I'm not wasting time, Lily. all right. Uh, You've been a dear, Marty. I'll tell Elliot now. Run along. Nice to meet you, Bell. Oh, uh, yeah. Same here. Oh, goodbye, Lydia. Bye, Marty, and thanks so much. He's such a dear. Lydia, I've been intending to bring this up for some time. I, uh, I've been disturbed about things that I've been hearing. Things? What things? About you and Elliot. Oh? You know when there's any sign of trouble between you, you're on dangerous ground. Why, Mr. Ballinger, I don't know what you're talking about. We're getting along beautifully. Where is Elliot, Lydia? It's New Year's Eve. You two should be together. Well, of course we should, but the night's only beginning, Mr. Ballinger. Why, I talked to Elliot only a little while ago. He's going to be here. Do you mind if I wait? <sighs> I know. I'd appreciate it if you would. He... Wait, there he is now. He just came in. Uh, would you excuse me a minute? I'll tell him where we are. Uh, uh, excuse me? Well, sure. Uh, would you let me through, please? Oh, sure. I'm sorry, lady. Uh, pardon me, please. Uh, Elliot! Oh, there you are. Where's Marty? I want to talk to him. He's not here, Elliot. Come over to the table with me. He ran out, huh? I sent him away. Ballinger's here. Ballinger? Smile, darling. He's looking right at us. What? Oh. oh. Uh, would you let us through, please? Yeah, excuse us. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, right here, darling. Right here. Well, here he is, Mr. Ballinger, my stray lamb. Do you remember Mr. Ballinger? Hello, Larkin. Yes. How are you, Ballinger? Sit down, my boy. I just ordered a round of drinks. Why, how nice. If you'll permit me, I'd like to offer a toast on your anniversary. Uh, one year, isn't it? That's right. Ah, oh, one beautiful year. Yes. Well, we can drink to that, and of course, to your future. May you remain as happy as you are tonight. <laughs> Right now, Lydia, as you lift your glass and touch it to the others, listen to Ballinger's hollow toast. You realize that this can't go on, that nine more years seem impossible. But it's impossible, too, Lydia, to sacrifice the money, isn't it? The money. The defeat of Uncle Philip on his own ground is uppermost in your mind. All you can think of an hour later as you sit beside Elliot in the car. I hope Mr. Ballinger doesn't think it odd, our leaving so early. Oh, I explained to him. I have to drive a friend to the airport. Oh? Johnny Gates? Yeah, he's flying to Seattle on the midnight plane. What I didn't tell Ballinger is that I'm going, too. Your what? Got my ticket, suitcase in the back. Elliot, you can't do this. Why not? Because of what it might mean. Ballinger's suspicious now. What will he think when he hears you've gone flying off somewhere on our anniversary? Does that matter? Of course it matters. He's got the power to cancel everything. You can't do it, Elliot. Wait a few days at least. I'm sorry. It's my first assignment on the new job. Company expects me to wire them from Seattle in the morning. Why? Why did you agree to such a thing? Maybe I've had all I can stand, Lydia. For half a million dollars, don't be a fool, Elliot. Look, look, I'll do anything you say. I'll stay away from Marty. Anything, Elliot, just give me a chance. Well, another helping. Huh? What? Same humble pie. Oh, Elliot, please, please be reasonable. Oh, Johnny's expecting me. Lydia, I don't see how I can change things now. I'm supposed to be there. Oh, there must be a way, Elliot. You, you'll regret this yourself. I know you will. Well, I wonder. What? What are you thinking? Maybe Johnny can help us. Come on up with me. We'll talk to him. Maybe I'm a little dumb tonight, Elliot. Give me another rundown on that, will you? Well, now, look, Johnny, it's simple. I'd just like an extra day here, that's all. You're flying north anyway. Couldn't you send that wire for me? To cover you with a company. That's right. Now, you see, that way Lydia and I can be together on our anniversary, and I'll be up there in a day or two. Well, I don't suppose there'll be much doing over the holiday anyway. Oh, not a thing. It's just that I don't want to beg off on my first assignment. No, that wouldn't be so good. Okay, pal, I'll handle it. Oh, I swear. Johnny, I appreciate this, too. Ah, forget it. Elliot's done plenty for me. Oh, Johnny, there's, there's one more thing. I don't like the idea of turning in my plane ticket. You know, just in case the company should check. Oh, I don't think they well, will. Well, I'd rather not take a chance. Now, look, if it doesn't matter to you, you're, you're leaving the company anyway, couldn't you turn yours back and go in my place all the way through? Well, you'll feel safer. Well, Johnny, I really would. Okay, let's have it. Say, uh, I'll even check into your hotel for you. Oh, huh? fine. Uh, we better get going. Yeah, right away. Well, I'll finish packing. Be with you in a minute. 
Satisfied, Lydia? Perfectly. Look, hmm? as long as we're going to make it look good to Ballinger, maybe we can go the whole hog. Hmm? How do you mean? Well, after we drop Johnny at the airport, how about driving up to Silver Lake Lodge? Wonderful. Remember the first time we were there? A brand new year, a brand new life. I remember it perfectly, Elliot. I'd love to go. I think it's exactly what Mr. Ballinger would like. Well, Lydia, for the moment you've won. But the worry of the future is on your mind, driving down to the airport and watching Johnny Gates off on Flight 27. And all the way up to Silver Lake Lodge, you wonder about those nine long years ahead. It isn't going to be easy, Lydia, but somehow you're determined to make Elliot continue to see it your way. A few miles below the lodge, you ask him to stop at a roadside store. Sounds like they're having quite a time down in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, I'll just want to get some cigarettes, Elliot. I'll be right back. Take your time. Cigarettes, please. Take your pick. Oh, these will do. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. A brief announcement, then back to the New Year's Round the Town celebration. Flight 27 of Fearless Airlines, northbound for Seattle, crashed and burned in an unexplained accident one hour ago. All on board were killed. That news comes suddenly, doesn't it, Lydia? The answer to everything. To Elliot, the money, everything. Yes, Lydia, Elliot was on that plane, even if it was in name only. At this very moment, as he waits for you in the car outside, he's officially dead, certainly unidentifiable. And the words of Uncle Philip's will keep running through your mind. If at any time, either Lydia or Elliot Larkin die, the entire sum is payable immediately to the survivor. You know how simple it can be now, Lydia. Yes, as you close the door behind you, walk through the bracing mountain air to the car, you realize that here is the opportunity of a lifetime. Freedom from Elliot and all of the $500,000 for yourself. And looking at Elliot relaxed, waiting for you, you know you're going to kill him tonight. Here has a horn or some other kind of Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, it's all right. Uh, just as I went into the store, there was some sort of news flash on the radio. You hear it? News flash? No, some other station, probably. Yes, I thought so. Hey, hey, I was enjoying that. New Year's Eve in New Orleans. Please, I'd like it quiet. We'll be up at the cabin in a few minutes. Right now, I want to think. Of course you want to think, Lydia. Of the loaded target pistol in the gun case at the cabin. Of how lonely it is there. Of how easy it'll be to dispose of Elliot's body in that wilderness. Less than an hour later, you're at the cabin, ready to put your plan in operation. The pistol is just beneath your hand, stuck between the sofa cushions as you sit before the fire Elliot has built for the occasion. You steady your nerves and... Elliot! Just a minute, dear. I'm fixing the drink. Hurry it up, will you? You're tense now, bracing yourself. You'll wait until he's moved around and is standing right in front of you, holding the drinks on the tray. That way it can't go wrong. Around this way, darling. Right near the fire. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, for Signal Oil Company and the almost 2,000 signal dealers throughout the states of California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Nevada, and Arizona, I want to wish you a very happy 1948. May your new year be filled with peace, prosperity, and the good health with which to enjoy these blessings. And now back to the Whistler. Yes, the 
marriage of Lydia Winters Larkin ended in murder on a New Year's Eve at a place called Silver Lake Lodge, where she and her husband Elliot had spent their honeymoon just a year before. There's a complete record now in the files of the Homicide Division. A record of a detective's curiosity over the crash of a northbound airplane and the supposed death of a passenger named Elliot Larkin. Of an investigation that led to a quick arrest and a complete confession. At police headquarters, Mr. Ballinger, the attorney, was remarkably philosophical as the lieutenant read the whole amazing story from a hurriedly prepared transcript of the confession. I can't say that I'm surprised, Lieutenant. I was afraid from the beginning that Philip's will would lead to something like that. Yes, the will, of course, gives us a solid motive. Although we already figured we'd find something like that. Oh, uh, there's one more paragraph to the confession. You want to hear it? Yes, read on, please. Well, it goes on to say, uh, once I knew that Johnny Gates was on that northbound plane traveling as Elliot Larkin, the way seemed perfectly clear. As soon as we got to the cabin, I got hold of a gun and waited for my opportunity. The first chance I had, I pulled the trigger twice without any warning, and it was all over. And then there's the signature, of course. The only thing I don't understand, Lieutenant, is how you were able to make the arrest so quickly. A good hunch on the part of one of the boys. You see, when he found out that Larkin was due up in Seattle on that new job, he flew up there as a matter of routine. Well, after that, of course, the arrest was over. Oh, they're bringing in the prisoner now. Do you want to... Yes, I'll stay. All right, Sergeant. In here. I, uh... I don't know how you ever expect to get by with this, Larkin. Does that matter now? Johnny Gates traveling in my name, I thought I had a perfect alibi. So I killed him. And until our man walked in on you in Seattle, you still didn't know that your alibi had blown up in that plane. Yeah. Funny thing, too. At night in the car, Liddy asked me if I'd heard a news flash. It must have been about that plane. I wonder why she didn't tell me. whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday night at the same time, brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Because this is New Year's Eve, the safety message with which we have closed every Whistler program during the past year has even more significance tonight. To get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Betty Lou Gerson and Gerald Moore. Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton and music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Next Wednesday, for a full hour of mystery over most of these stations, tune in a half hour earlier. Enjoy The Saint as well as The Whistler. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.